More than 150,000 people have died of coronavirus in the U.S. as of today. And if that number doesn't really mean much to you, I want to remind you that on April 1st, I spoke on this show about projections from the University of Washington, predicting 93,000 people would die from the virus by August 4th, which at the time felt unthinkable. So now that we've blown past that prediction by more than 57,000 men, women, and children, the Association of American Medical Colleges is warning, quote, if the nation does not change its course and soon, deaths in the United States could well be into the multiple hundreds of thousands. And yet, if you ask the White House, everything is just fine. You can look at large portions of our country. It's, uh, it's corona-free. Unbelievable and callous. He's also still pushing hydroxychloroquine as a cure and lauding the statements of an anti-mask pro-hydroxychloroquine doctor in Houston who previously claimed alien DNA is used in medical treatments and is a self-proclaimed expert on, you ready, astral sex, whatever that is. So, to repeat the actual facts, and do you believe I have to say actual before facts? No credible study has proven that hydroxychloroquine helps coronavirus patients, and several studies have been stopped because of concerns the drug might actually cause more harm. But you know what does help? Masks. Like the kind Texas Congressman Louis Gomer has been refusing to wear right up through yesterday when the Hill's Olivia Beavers caught him maskless on camera, walking next to Attorney General Bill Barr, who took off his mask as well right after that. Today, as you probably know, Gomer tested positive for COVID-19 as he was being screened just before he was supposed to travel to Texas with the president. Must be nice to know when someone's a health threat right away instead of waiting a week or two to find out like most of the rest of the nation. Although it would probably be nicer if that person had been wearing a mask to begin with. And while masks are among our best defenses at the moment, ultimately, it's all about the vaccine. And the race is on. Cambridge-based Moderna just started its phase three trial on a promising candidate this week as did Pfizer, and Johnson & Johnson started human trials in Belgium with hope of entering phase three in the U.S. in September. And in Russia, officials are indicating they'll give approval for a vaccine there, maybe in the next week or two, before human trials are even complete. Obviously, there's some concerns there. So when will we get to the finish line? And will it be safe when we do? I'm joined by Dr. Stephen Walsh. He's an infectious disease specialist at Brigham and Women's Hospital and co-investigator on the Moderna vaccine trial. Doctor, it's good to meet you. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having me. Can you explain what it means when you and Pfizer, Moderna and Pfizer, are entering the last phase? What happens exactly at that point forward? Sure. So what we're undertaking um, in the next week or so here at the Brigham is a phase three study, which means the phase one study and phase two studies have already happened in people. The phase one Moderna study was published recently in the New England Journal of Medicine. Mm -hmm. It was a small study, but demonstrated that it was safe, well tolerated and generated the kind of immune responses that we hope might be protective. The phase two study is about 400 people. Fully enrolled, hasn't completed its analysis yet, but um, it's been, uh, the interim data has been reported to our data safety monitoring board who gave the green light to launch the phase three study, which launched at some of our partner sites this week. The phase three study and is- Before it, you continue for a second, if phase two, had not been a success, would you have gotten that green light that you just described? No. Okay. Even though we're moving very, very fast, we're moving fast by doing things in parallel. We're not skipping any of the safety steps that we normally do. We're just doing them faster and in parallel. So rather than waiting a year or two to move from phase one to phase two to phase three, we're doing things in parallel so we can make decisions within months. So I interrupted you. Give us a brief summary of what does phase three look like? Yep, so the phase three program for the COVID vaccine studies are going to be very large studies. The Moderna study, which is open this week in the US, is enrolling 30,000 people 
Mm -hmm. Half will get vaccine, half will get placebo. All participants will be followed for up to two years for COVID infections and for complications of COVID infections, including hospitalizations and adverse outcomes from COVID disease. Well, when you yeah. said, doctor, up to two years there, I'm assuming a lot of jaws dropped. Dr. Fauci, who probably is the most trusted person in America on these issues, when commenting on the Moderna trial, said that, one, he expected there could be results as to how effective it is by November or December, and went on to say it is, quote, distinctly possible we might know even earlier. Is he right in that regard? Yes, he is. So the study counts endpoints, and what we mean by endpoints are COVID infections, so proven COVID infections in the volunteers. We count them starting at two weeks after the second vaccination. And once we see a big enough difference between the people who see the vaccine, who received the vaccine and people who received the placebo, we'll announce at that point what the results are. All of the individuals will get followed for up to two years so that we can have more long-term safety data but we can announce um, results as soon as we see a significant difference between the placebo recipients and the vaccine recipients. Yeah, you mentioned a minute ago, I don't know if you use this exact terminology, doctor, about how uh, the fact that there is speed does not mean that risk is attendant to it, but I'm sure you've seen these really troubling polls. We just pulled one from May, an Associated Press uh, a poll. Do you plan to get a coronavirus vaccine when available? 49% yes overall, not sure or no, 51%. And then that same poll amongst African Americans, only 25%, uh, 25% yes, not sure or no, 72%, which is just shocking. What do you say to such people, the 72 percent and the 51 percent, to assure them that warp speed does not mean high risk? We're what we're doing is we're collecting safety information all along the way so we can have an accurate safety profile of the product. In people who receive the vaccine, we expect to see some people have arm pain, likely a little more than what people get with the flu shot every year. Um, some people have reported uh, fatigue, so being tired the next day, being run down, some body aches. That's typical of some other vaccines as well, um, like the shingles vaccine. So th mm -hmm. those are the expected side effects. By following tens of thousands of people over two years, we'll be able to say at the end of the day that the product is highly safe and highly effective, we hope, at preventing the disease. And the onus really is on... I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, the Continue. illness really is on us to prove safety, mm -hmm. that safety is not being sacrificed at any stage of this product development. One of the things we've all learned who are not in the business you're in, that uh, uh, doing trials to get to a safe and effective vaccine is one thing. Getting into the arms of enough people is the second thing. The president said the other day that the government was financing manufacture of all, he didn't use the word credible, but I will, credible trials so that those that prove effective and safe will be ready to go to the tune of tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions of doses. I, I can't believe I asked the question this way, but you have to with this president. Is he telling the truth as relates to manufacture? Yes, absolutely. Um, these products have been chosen partly because of their manufacturability. So they can be manufactured at scale and in exchange for receiving government money from Operation Warp Speed, the companies have already started manufacturing the vaccine at scale. So once we have a success, we can immediately start to deploy it. When you say deploy, I don't know if you're in this part of the business, but another concern is the distribution issue. And I don't want to get ahead of ourselves, but let's, I guess, for a minute, who gets it first and what's the distribution chain? I would guess historically one might assume the CDC would put out guidelines. Essentially, the CDC has been virtually sidelined by this president. Are, are 
you worried about that? And are you, in, I don't mean you personally, well, I do mean you personally. And are you, are your, or is Moderna engaged in any effort to ensure that there is equitable and fully thought out distribution once you're ready to go, assuming you are? Yes, so the, the committee which recommends uh, vaccine usage um, in the US called the ACIP, the uh, American Committee on in Immunization Practices, has started to discuss who would be the priority when a vaccine is successful. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, data, the decision's really gonna be data-driven once we have some information on the efficacy of one or more of the vaccines, we'll know which people it was most successful in. So did it work best in under 65 year olds, for instance? Um, people I understand. Who are older often don't have um, as robust immune responses to vaccines. Um, so those will be considerations. People who and the are trial, and let me be clear, the trial participants, I hope will be diverse enough that you'll know about all different segments of the population, including people of color who have disproportionately suffered from this and older people and that you're nodding in agreement, that's the case. Yes, so what absolutely. percentage of people have to have gotten it so that we all feel safe to return to semi-normality in America, doctor? So the, the study is designed so that approximately 25 to 40% of people will be above the age of 65 and or have medical conditions which predispose them to having a more severe COVID disease if they get infected. Uh -huh. um, and with that, we'll be able to tell whether the vaccine prevents infection or if it prevents um, COVID disease in people who do get infected. Do you entertain the possibility at all that, that no vaccine trial will be successful? We all know that there was never a vaccine despite uh, uh, promises decades ago for HIV, for example. Is failure a possibility here? I, certain, I certainly hope not. Um, I've been working in the HIV vaccine field for about 20 years. And so uh -huh. disappointment um, has been uh, part of my job description for the last 20 uh -huh. years. Uh, but I certainly hope not. It looks from other coronaviruses that uh, people do make antibody responses, which may be protective. So we're hoping that it's an easier target than HIV. Um, but the proof's in the pudding. We have to do the studies to find out. Doctor, one last thing. We only have 15 seconds. I'm wondering if you can help the people in this region solve a mystery. Boston Globe ran a story this day with a photograph to talk about a company that's not exactly publicity shy, Moderna, covering up their sign uh, just a few blocks from where I'm sitting. Have any idea what's up with that? Um, I do not. Um, I saw the okay. reports as well, um, but I have no insight on that. Well, you had a lot of insight on really important matters, and I really appreciate it and your time, doctor. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me.